Coming up on this very first episode of the Angler's Channel Extra, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, we take a look at what may become the first of a very popular memorial tournament down in Florida, honoring the late pro Glenn Brown. We've got highlights from the Bassmaster Team Championship and Classic Fish Off on Lake Hartwell, and we'll have a product spotlight for you as well. Check it out right here on the Angler's Channel Extra, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Hey folks, thanks for clicking in. I'm Angler Channel's Chris Brown, and welcome to the first of many Angler's Channel Extras brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, a very cool webcast designed just for you, the tournament bass fisherman. The Bassmaster Team Championship and Classic Fish Off were held back in December on beautiful Lake Hartwell out of Green Pond Landing. 329 anglers started the competition on Wednesday, and by Saturday, only six anglers remained vying for a coveted spot and the 50th anniversary of the Bassmasters Classic right down the road here on beautiful Lake Gunnersville. 165 teams from 30 states along with anglers from Canada and South Africa fished for the first two days with the top three teams advancing to the Classic Fish Off at a Green Pond Landing on that Friday there in Anderson. The six remaining anglers compete for the largest two-day weight with the winner receiving of the last spot in the 50th anniversary of the Bassmasters Classic. Now we all know the Classic is the Super Bowl of bass fishing, but being the 50th year, it makes it an even more special honor. Now our crews were there on site and ran into my good buddy, Neil Paul with Visit Anderson. Here's what he had to say. Uh, what a great event in our community this week. We've had uh, four really challenging days of fishing just from a weather standpoint. We've had uh, 68 degrees this week. We've had uh, 38 degrees this week. We've had uh, calm conditions. We've had rain. We've had windy conditions. Uh, we've had a 26 pound bag pulled out of Hartwell this week. We had a 23 pound bag uh, pulled out of Hartwell in the same day. Uh, just a tremendous uh, effort by the fishery this week. Um, they couldn't be more proud of the facility facility that we have here in Green Pond, the, the ability to show that facility off to the folks that were a part of the Bassmaster Team Championship this week. Well, it all came down to competition of Missouri versus North Carolina. Our two-day fish-off competitors are Brock Rankenmeyer from Lone Jack, Missouri, Brad Jelinek from Warsaw, Missouri, Chasey Chusikal from Sanford, North Carolina, Tim Penhollow from Mabane, North Carolina, Tim Taylor from Nixon, Missouri, and Josh Busby from Rogersville, Missouri. As the six competed for the largest weight to win that coveted 53rd spot in this year's Classic, emotions were high. And of course, as always, it always comes down to two. All right, we got the U, Brock, and Josh left. Brock Rinkemeyer, Josh Busby, one of you is going to the Bassmaster Classic. Before we hand one of you guys the trophy, you got to tell everybody how you caught your fish this week, and then we'll do a few thank yous, and then we'll make this happen. I caught everything on a motion fishing football jig, three-quarter ounce, with a Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver, and then I used a warning shot on a drop shot to catch two of them, and then I think one on a crankbait. And what kind of area of the lake where you fish and what deep shallow mostly shallow uh, it was in the back of a creek it was what brad was talking about we both fished it and it just uh i found a magic dock in there that we fished in practice and during the team event and never got a bite and i've caught i think five of my fish the last two days off of that dock all right so you're seconds away from possibly being in the Bassmaster Classic. What's that? What are the emotions right now? Words can't describe it. I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. Josh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. 
You want me to quit messing around? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Funny. All right, go get your fish. Brock of Rinkemeyer. He's got... He has 13.7 after yesterday. He needs basically the same thing. He needs 13.6 or Josh Busby is going to the Classic. 13.5 would be a tie. 13.6, anything less than that, Josh is going. 12 pounds, 15 ounces. Josh Busby is going to represent the Bassmaster Team Championship. At the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> it uh, seems very. I don't know. I mean, you always dream of one day having just the the opportunity. And I told my marshal today with me when I caught my biggest one, and I was able to pull up a few times just real fast and it just took me back to my childhood and like I was talking about you know my dad got me into tournament fishing whenever I was nine years old and all my summers were spent with my grandma walking up and down a creek she took me from basically time from time I was six to like I was 12 years old every day during the summer fishing and it's just something I've always wanted to do yeah. I'm gonna let him enjoy it one more time your team championship Representative to the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic, presented by Hook, Josh Busby. Make sure you keep up with all the classic news leading up to the event right here on anglerschannel.com. We'll have crews on the water, at the weigh-ins, at the expo, and behind the scenes keeping you up to date and giving you all the information you need to follow along with this year's 50th anniversary of the Bassmaster Classic. Y'all hang tight, I'll be right back with the product spotlight from Sportsman's Warehouse. Whether day or night, I love to tie one on. Every day of the week, I like to tie one on. I don't care who's looking, I always tie one on. Every time I go on the water, I love to tie one on. You may not know this about me, but every once in a while, I've been known to tie one on. Come on, man, join the Stray King team. All you gotta do, tie one on. <laughs> I think I always tie one on. Welcome back, folks. I'm Chris Brown, the Angler's Channel Extra, here with a Sportsman's Warehouse product spotlight featuring the all-new Yeti Hopper M30. Now, this is an absolutely rad, soft-sided cooler, brand new from Yeti, which is tough as nails with one giant update. They've re-engineered the opening of this, featuring a wide mouth for very easy loading and lo unloading, and it closes almost instantly on its own thanks to the new HydraShield technology. You ask, but well, what is HydraShield technology? Well, it's a giant magnetic strip that goes all the way across the mouth of this sucker, and it keeps you easy loading, easy unloading, get in there and get what you want. No zippers to mess with, no, no Velcro, nothing else. And the cool thing is, It'll close all on its own. It's got two reinforced buckles to buckle this sucker here. And when buckled, you can toss this thing around the truck, the boat, upside down, inside out. It doesn't matter. Everything's going to be safe. Water, ice, drinks, everything's going to stay inside. It's absolutely awesome. I've been using this for a few months now. I take it to the beach, had it in the boat, had it in the ski boat. But most importantly, it stays with me in my truck, kind of behind my seat in the middle while I'm going down the road and while I'm traveling for Angler's Channel. I can reach back, I can open it up pretty easy with one hand, I can get in there and get a water or whatever I need, and then it closes on its own. It's got two carry handles, even got a shoulder strap, holding over 28 pounds of ice, a ton of drinks, sandwiches, food, whatever you need. You gotta check out the Hopper M30 from Yeti at Sportsman's Warehouse, and of course, at Sportsman's.com. My buddy Vance McCullough caught up recently with our buddy Bernie Schultz, Bassmaster Elite Series Pro, down on the Harris Channel Lakes during the Glen Brown Memorial Tournament. Here's Vance's report. Folks, we're here on the Harris Channel Lakes in beautiful Central Florida. Fall of the year, it's a beautiful day to be out here for a great cause. I'm with Bernie Schultz, 
Bass Master Elite Series Pro Extraordinaire veteran, <laughs> and uh, we're here to commemorate one of your friends who was a longtime FLW tournament fisherman, very good fisherman, and an even better person. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn Brown uh, from Ocala, Florida. Um, Glenn was a generation behind me. Uh, we didn't really cross paths until he qualified for the Elite Series, and we kind of backed into uh, the meeting, really. Uh, we ended up sharing a house on Lake Seminole, one of the first tournaments of the year, and um, it was him and uh, Jacob Prosnick and myself staying kind of down in the uh, lower part of the lake together. And uh, I got to know Glenn. I mean, I, I knew of Glenn before that, obviously. He was, he was making a lot of headway in Florida in, in different tournaments, trying to build his name and get established and get his sponsorships going. And uh, when he qualified for the Elite Series, that was really the first time I really was you know, in sync with him doing anything together. And we traveled, ended up traveling the whole year together. And uh, he, he's a remarkable guy. I, I, you know, I learned a lot from Glenn. I, I, it's sad that he's gone. He, he had a huge impact on the sport in Florida. He, he won tournaments. He, he, um, he won people too. I mean, he, yeah. you know, he, he, had, he commanded respect. He, he, he didn't really listen to doc talk and he didn't get involved with the politics. He just kind of kept the, the blinders on and, and focused straight ahead and did his own thing. And, and I had a lot of respect for him for that. I met Glenn much earlier than you did. I was fishing the American Bass Angler Series back then. I was the, uh, you know, a no-boater, a co-angler, they called us in the, in the ABA days. And right. I remember Glenn was 19 and he was whipping everybody's butt. He's just taking all the, I said, well, Glenn, I said, when are you going to quit taking these old men's money and go over on an FLW tour and go make you some money or something? And he, he said, no, nah. I said, I, I want to fish where I can, can make a check. And I just laughed. I thought, dude, 23 pounds is 23 pounds, no matter where you catch it, bro. Yeah. A couple years later, here he is on, on, you know, lighting it up on TV, and I told my wife, said, there's that old cat, you know. And uh, he yeah. just never looked back. He's just a great angler, and uh, if anything, almost too humble like that, you know. He wasn't, wasn't you know, full of pride and all that. He, just, just yeah, he, wasn't, of, he wasn't flashy, you know. He, he just, like I said, he, he kind of stayed in his own lane, did his own thing. He, he you know, he was known for flipping. And, and, and he flipped to a fault sometimes. I mean, you, you got to be versatile on tour and, and he took a lot of whippings, but he kind of like Denny Brower, when there was a flipping bite, watch out. And, yeah. and he, he just, you know, he, he made a lot, a lot of high finishes based on flipping. And that's kind of how he was identified as far as technique and skill and all that in, in tournament fishing. He won some big events. He won in Florida, won in New York. He won some major events and uh, super guy, understated um, and proud. You know. Tell you what, it's loved by a lot of other fellow pros and there are a lot of other fellow pros here today who've come to celebrate his life and, and to help raise money to benefit other people who are afflicted similarly with cancer. And uh, man, let's go see if we can catch up with some of those guys, see how they're yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah. the lake and go see uh, some of these guys out here. We've got some big names out here too. That's cool. We've got uh, Shaw Grigsby's here, Trevor Fitzgerald, um, uh, Terry Scroggins. I mean, there's some, some big name pros that, that took time out of their schedules to come down and support this, and that's neat. We had the privilege of being there at the uh, Wolfson tournament the other day, back in May. It seemed like the other day. And uh, that was Glenn's last tournament, his last, you know, victory lap on, on what's been a great career. And uh, I guess a couple years prior to that had been really hard on him. Things went downhill pretty fast but uh there's always a silver lining yeah i mean it was really sad he qualified for the elite series in 2014 and you know like i said I, I roomed with him that season and got to know him pretty well and up to that point he was really productive and, and winning a lot and doing great uh, in opens and in previous to that the flw tour and uh so he had high expectations, we all did for him really coming into the Elite Series, but it didn't work out for him. He just had a bad year and it seemed to get worse as the year progressed and it was hard to watch really. And then at the end of the season, he goes home and he's got domestic issues. He, he goes through a really ugly, bitter divorce with his wife and uh, manages to get through that. And then the next, next year, the next, you know, as the calendar rolled into the next year, he finds out he's got cancer and uh, started that battle and, and uh, you know then he kind of you know worked through it and he was doing the treatments he met Melissa at that point which was huge uh, a lot of people wondered you know it's kind of a quick romance they met on online on the you know on the internet 
So that's always suspect, but, <laughs> but uh, Melissa proved she was genuine. She was in for the, the long haul. She loved him and she was totally committed to him. And, and I think it happened for a reason. I mean, she was a trained nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a teaching nurse. And Glenn was looking at a lot of uncertainty and, and all this medical treatments ahead, you know, the, all the cancer treatments. And she got him through all that. And, and, uh, and it, it was just like, like it was meant to be, like a storybook deal. And, and he uh, got into remission for a while and things were looking up. He was fishing again, fishing good. And then the bad news came, it had spread and, and he spiraled down from there pretty quickly. Well, and a testament to Melissa's character is that, you know, she's the driving force behind this event today. She's she the is. reason all these guys, she's the reason 176 boats showed up in Glenn's memory and to raise funds to help people because she sees it every day. Being a nurse, you know, she That's understands right. the need there. That's right. And she's, she wants to bring awareness to it. And also there's a lot of fundraising going on with this event and that money will be put to a good cause. And, and I, I think it's outstanding. I don't know if it'll continue, but even if it's just a one-time event, she's done a lot of good. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Mercury, go boldly. Look at here. Oh, good one, good one. That's good fish on. You're mic'd up, Bernie. You got Bernie on yep. right now, Kenny? Yep. Well, Bernie, when you get to a shell bed like this, you can just really get well in a hurry. These gentlemen, that's at least four fish we've seen to put in the box right here. Yeah, I mean, th that's kind of kind of a deep water pattern in Florida. You know, deep is a relative term in Florida, but offshore, away from the bank, shell beds are about as good as it gets, unless you can find offshore hydrilla or, or some kind of grass. But how deep are we sitting right here, Bernie? We're in uh, 11 foot, it says. So Shaw Grigsby, how's it gone this morning as far as the fishing's concerned? Well, we haven't caught one yet, but the fishing's good. The Price it, you know, I'm out here with my grandson, and so he's having fun, I'm having fun. We've got some scattered hydrilla out here. We're just looking for, you know, hopefully a big one or two. And uh, if not, we're gonna take off and go hunt another spot up. But I haven't been on this lake since last year when we had a tournament that Vernon Kent put on. So I'm just kind of playing around, just, you know, you use past knowledge and, and hope that some of it works. Just a typical fall pattern at a hydrilla. Yeah. You know, in Florida, that's a that's a great pattern. I mean, even in the spring, they'll stay in the hydrilla and, and then migrate into spawn and come back. So you'll have since the since the spawn is so long in Florida that you'll have fish in this grass pretty much year round. Well, regardless of the catching, the fishing's great, and it's for a great cause today out here great commemorating cause. Glenn. Yeah, you know, it's uh, what's really you know it's it's sad that we lost Glenn Brown to cancer, a, a great person and and great angler but his wife picked up the cause and, you know, cancer, and I, I'll say it just straight out, cancer sucks. I lost my dad to cancer. We got, you know, so many friends and family and people that have had it and just battling every day. So it's a, a great cause to raise funds for that. It's for the Swanee River uh, Cancer Foundation that, that uh, a buddy of mine runs that the most of the funds are going to. So that takes care of all the people that get cancer helps them get transportation to treatments and backs and taking care of their family and providing so much assistance. So, you know, uh, Melissa's done a great job in doing this. So 176 other boats showed up today. How do you feel about that outpouring of support? I was overwhelmed, <laughs> overwhelmed. Um, it started out, you know, I had like 30 or 40 and then, you know, slowly they started trickling in and everybody told me, you know, they like to sign up last, you know, they wait till the last minute, they watch the weather, they want to be a later flight. And then this past week has just been insane. My phones rang off the hook. People want to pay over the phone, sign up. Um, you know, we had the weather yesterday, which we made a good call to be safe. We needed to be safe for all the anglers and we changed the date and um, two local club tournaments in Citrus County canceled their club tournaments to participate today, oh, which awesome. that brought more 
voters because the guys were like, well, we're not going to fish our club tournament. We want to come support you. So we had we had quite a few, probably 30 plus that signed up today, this morning. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable when you postpone an event and still draw, actually increase your numbers. That never happens. Yeah, we made 140 phone calls and texts on Friday, and I think only we lost only six out of 140. So. Terry Scroggins and his son ended up winning the Glen Brown Memorial Tournament, helping raise over $33,000 to help others suffering from cancer. Well, folks, that's a wrap for the first ever Angler's Channel Extra brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Be safe on the water out there and make sure you stay up to date on the latest news, products, current results, and more right here at anglerschannel.com, your number one tournament bass fishing resource.